Feeling better? Better than what? Huh? You want me feeling better, you said? This is purely medicinal. After. To celebrate. Look. Used to be as steady as a rock. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? What? Macbeth, the three witches. Oh. Just ordinary household sugar? Yeah. Same as I put in my tea. Amazing. Can I have none? Here we are. $1,500 worth. The finest Australian white opal. Yeah, but not for long. In the light. Mmm, classy. I'll go if you're drunk. Come on, get in here. Where is it? Done like a dinner. I will get it. All right, give him a little time to get alive. Come on, get it. You trust him so, aren't you? Absolutely beautiful. I've no intention of selling it, of course, but I would be interested in knowing what you think it's worth. For a black oval of this size and quality, $18,000. $18,000. I told you. And the formula? The process? Yeah, I have it here. Oh, not so fast. The deal was a formal contract, offering me 100,000 in cash and a percentage of all sale. I have it here. Good. Nothing illegal on my side. I'm too old for jail. Well, it's simply a business deal. I buy a process from you and make you a part owner of one of my companies, from which you receive a legitimate profit every year. That's it? Legitimate? Let's drink to it. Good. I thought my brandy wasn't to your taste. Today I'm prepared to suffer. Come on, you two, or I'll 
lose the sun. If you want to get a picture published in the surfing world, you'd better be serious. Who wants to be serious? Be happy! If we get it published, we'll get money. Aren't you? Don't want effeminate long hairs like you hanging around my daughter. So I says, if I'm so effeminate, how come she's pregnant? <laughs> well, his face goes purple at that. What about <laughs> the bird? Oh, she knew I was having her old man on. I hadn't touched her. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, all of a sudden he comes at me, and I run like hell with him chasing me. And all of a sudden I hear this great thumping crash. I turn around and look. Well, there's the old geezer. He's fallen head over fin into this great pile of... Hey, fellas! <laughs> Get a look at that! Man, what a beautiful piece of machinery. Hey, look, the waves are up. Well, what are we waiting for? be a regular lover's lane. Some more tire tracks and I'm full the raceway. He's been dead about 24 hours. Killed somewhere else. The body brought here and dumped. Any identification? No, uh, the clothes are secret from the rag bag. Nothing in the pockets. Well, it doesn't sound like murder for profit. Oh, no appearance to be deceptive. Have a check around the area, see what you can find out. Right. You haven't forgotten that I want an hour off. Here, trouble, isn't it? All right, take it away. Fingerprints. Your corpse has a record. Mm. Not surprising. That would kill him? Yeah, 38. His name is, or rather was, Tony Hogarth. Could have been a brilliant chemist, only the grog got him. Mm. Caught stealing drugs? Yes, presumably to pay for the... Uh... He was released 12 months ago. No trouble since. Maybe he was an addict. If he was... We'll soon find out. Where's Riverton? He's outside talking to Trish Towns. Well, get him in here. Yes, sir. Riverton! That be all, sir? For the moment, Sergeant. 
When you finish socializing, we've got work to do. You can read it on the way. On the way? To the murder victim's last known address. Thanks. What are they like? OK, at a quick glance, we'll pick the best and send them off to the magazine. And hope they publish them. I left the negatives. Thought we might get another lot done for ourselves. What, lashing out before we even get the dough, mate? I'm going to lash out even more. Let's go to the pub. Yeah. Let me hear right, Come on. Got it all clear? Yeah, I got it clear in the file. Haven't got it clear on why he was killed. Well, if we had the reason, the case would be near enough to over. Here's that car again. Yeah, she's fantastic. Most pubs work on the principle that if the weather's hot, the customers stay longer and drink more. Now, this one's different. If the waves are up, regardless of the weather, no business. If the seas are flat as Twiggy's chest... <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? What'd it be, fellas? Uh, three beers, please. <clears throat> Farrelly's great, one of the best. But our nest is special, he's got something else. Yeah, a rich and famous old man. He won the championships because he was the best on the boards, not because his old man's a Hollywood film star. Still, you've got to admit, if it wasn't for his old man's money, he'd have to work for a living. Sure, he gets more riding in than most of us, but then so does Farrelly, Nick. No, let me. I'll have a scotch on the rocks. If you insist. I do. Is that your Mercedes outside? That's right. Like it? Like it. I love it. Tell me, have you boys ever surfed the West Coast? You mean Margaret River? You're Lingo. Uh, West Australia. Oh. oh, I meant California. You've got to be kidding. Uh, can you get there by tram? <laughs> well, how about Hawaii? Listen, mister, if you want us to drool, you're doing it. Well, you must have thought about it. We'd think of nothing else. Well, you know, it's not really that far away. A few thousand miles. Only a wave away. <laughs> Cheers. You were very lucky to find me in, Inspector. I normally go to yoga classes Thursdays. Yoga? Drama Mondays, bowling Wednesdays, yoga Thursdays. Oh, at my age, I have to keep active. Ah, that's it. My God, no wonder he didn't want me to come in. How long has Mr. Hogarth lived here, Mrs. Bacon? Oh, about six months, Inspector. He said he wanted to get out of town, to somewhere quiet. And he told you he was a chemist. Looks like he was telling the truth. Oh, the disgusting mess. Oh, look at those burns. Acid. He should be shot. He was, Miss Bacon. Right about here, by the looks of things. What is it? Blood. Oh. Oh. Catch her. Hello, Charlie. Fred Walsh. Uh-uh. Roy Mason. Whatever you say. What are you doing here, slumming? Ah, I come to see you. I'm flattered. Want a game? No, thanks. Mind if I play on that? He's as good a place to start a conversation as any. You are coming up in the world, aren't you? Yeah, so are you. You heard about the business, then? It's fully legitimate. It's a good front. Yeah. Charlie, how does $2,000 appeal to you? Half as much as $4,000. Well, it could be worth that one day, or even more. What do I have to do, knock someone off? Nothing so desperate. It's simply a combination of your business and mine. Let's have a drink. Good idea. How's Miss Bacon? Oh, she's resting in her car. She says she'll be OK. I think you better drive her home. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, forensic will be able to give us better answers to that. Whatever it was that was tied in with what Hogarth was cooking up in there. 
And for my money, it wasn't home brew. Ow. Ow, the pain. Oh, still it's all going your eyes. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh. Put about a gallon in there, love. I think I've got a head full. All right. Oh, I feel giddy. Hold my hand. <laughs> Get off. Yes, sir. Come in here a second, will you? Oh, that'll be five dollars, please. What? Five dollars. Sorry, I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, yeah. Forensic have been working all night. Inspector McLeod brought me his report this morning to my flat, seven o'clock. That double boiler contained a mixture of various acids plus sugar. They're all listed there. So? Well, there's no so, that's it. They don't know what the mixture was used for? Exactly. Could mean everything or nothing. Anything else? Black velvet. Champagne and stout. Sorry. Well, the boys went over Hogarth's flat last night with a fine tooth comb. And then late they found this. Hid in the kitchen cupboard. Mean anything to you? Oh, yeah. Don't they use velvet for, uh, for polishing? Well, Hogarth was scarcely the house proud type. Anyway, it's as clean as a whistle. Well, what then? It's just a hunch. No, it's not even that. But sometimes jewelers, gem merchants, use velvet for displaying their wares. Do you think he was a jewel thief? Oh. Possible, but not likely. Not being an alcoholic. A middleman, maybe. Perhaps a fence. Excuse me, sir. Topsy report on uh, Hogarth just came through. Seems to rule out the drug theory. Yeah. Well, we knew he peddled the stuff at one time, but... Uh, didn't fall for taking it himself, eh? Anyway, he wouldn't have lived too long. Cirrhosis of the liver. That's surprising after all that grog. No. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Yeah. All right. Get into all the fences. And I want a list of every jewel robbery in the last six months here in Interstate. It'll take time. That's what they pay us for. Short, I'd like to get a ride in. <laughs> oh, yeah, as short as I can. Right. Wait a sec, Nick's on his way. Great ride, Nick. Great man. Wouldn't mind one myself. Well, if it wasn't important, believe me, I wouldn't have interfered with your fun. I've got a proposition that I think will interest you. I'm about to go into the business of manufacturing surfboards. Sounds great. It will be. Because I'm not after the Australian market. I want to go where the money is. The U.S. Exactly. Quick as a flash, aren't you? Now, my sample range, I want to live it to the States by a group of Australian surfers. That should stimulate a fair amount of interest and promote a fair amount of publicity. Now, that's where you come in. Us? I want you three to be my team of surfers. Two weeks in America, with a three-day stopover in Hawaii, all expenses paid. You're joking. I never joke when it comes to business. Are you interested? Mr. Mason? Could we have a couple of days to think it over? Make it 24 hours and it's a deal. Twenty-four hours it is. Let's have another. What is it, Sergeant? There's a Miss Bacon here to see you, sir. Oh, Hogarth's landlady. Ask her to come in. 
Yes, sir. Will you come in this way, please, Mr. Thakin? The inspector will see you now. Oh. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, Miss Bacon. Please sit down. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Bacon? It's Mrs. Cummings. I don't think I know her. Oh, no, I'm sure you don't. She lives a couple of doors down from my place. Or rather, the place I rented to Mr. Hogarth. I see. Uh, well, she's been away in the country visiting her sister. Oh, she has very bad asthma attacks. Mrs. Cummings. No, her sister. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear about it. Well, she was away when the police were talking to all the other people in the neighborhood. And then this morning, after reading about Mr. Hogarth's death in the paper, she phoned me. The police scare her, you see. So she suggested that I come along and see you on her behalf. What about? She says that a man in a sports car has been visiting Mr. Hogarth. What kind of sports car? Oh, flashy and expensive. That's all she could say. And that it was grey. Well, how often did she see it? Oh, a couple of times in the last week. Oh, she's very vague, unfortunately. And where is she now? Oh, she's still away in the country, but I have her address. Now, have you seen this car, Miss Bacon? No, never. Well, as I told you, Mr. Hogarth pays his rent by mail, so I stay away from the place. Uh, <laughs> I have so many other interests. Yes, so you said. Well, thank you very much. Well, I do hope that's been helpful. Any information is of help, Miss Bacon? Oh, I told Mrs. Cummings. I said Inspector Buchanan is charming. Not like a policeman at all. Thank you. Come in, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Where's Riverton? He's downstairs, sir, on a job for you. Well, get whoever's available. A flashy, expensive, grey sports car was seen outside the Hogarth place last week. I want the car and the driver identified. Somebody else must have seen it. Well, that's all, man. On your yes, way. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, you blokes, take an early lunch. We'll be back by 1.30. Anyone else about? No. Well, it's a good setup you got here. And it makes money. Nice to have a front, but pays off all by itself. You should know, Roy. Yeah, let me show you how this surfboard business works. Now this... This is the uh, beginning of a board. And it's in this that we put the apples. Just hollow out the middle and drop them in. And then the centre is covered with fiberglass. Then the board is sanded down to the correct shape. Most of the boards here are made to order. Getting very popular too. And there's no possibility of anyone being able to see through the board? No, none. Excuse me, let me show you. There. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. If that's your taste. Yeah, well, it makes the board completely opaque and lets us pick the ones the opals are in straight off. Clever. Thanks for the compliment. How soon can the boards be ready? A week after you get me the opals. Well, it'll take that long for our innocent service to get their passports and injections and so forth. They've accepted them. Oh, they will. This time tomorrow, we'll have the whole thing sewn up. And then? And then, my good friend Charlie, within a month, we'll both be very rich men. Who's this one? Oliver Francis Fields. Read on, mate. He's dead. Oh. Well, that's one off the list of possible associates. <laughs> Here's one. Charlie Hall. Now, he's what you really call a fence. Was a fence. Oh? Don't say he's dead as well. No, he's gone legit. 
I'm the surfboard job of all things. <laughs> Bit old for that sort of life, isn't it? Oh, they tell me you're never too old, mate. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. Here's another one. Well, didn't hurt, did it? That's only the first one. Don't remind me. Where to now? Passport photos. Oh, come on, let's have a beer first. The doc said to lay off the booze. Yeah, well, he didn't have the injection, did he? <laughs> come on, if we're gonna be away within a week, we better get a move right. on. Well, what do you think? They're really something, aren't they? Yep. How soon will the first board be ready? I don't panic, I'll let you know. Don't try to fool me, Charlie. I told you, the boards will be ready on time. It's not what I meant. I'm trusting you with thousands of dollars worth of opals. You just might decide to keep a lot for yourself. And end up like Hogarth? What? What do you mean? Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to tell anybody. I just put two and two together and... Yeah, well, stop counting. You just do your part of a job and do it right. Yeah, well, come on over here and I'll show you just how right. Now, these boards, the plain ones, are the ones your boys will actually ride. Yeah. The boards the opals are in are like these. See? Just like the one I showed you the other day. Good move. This way, there'll be no confusion in the mind of the surfers which board is which. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll take one of these plain boards now and take it out to the boys and let them try it out. Okay. It rides well. It'll be a champ one day. You think the board's all right? Looks fine from here. You and Joey collect your boards tomorrow. Well, here's the address. If you lose it, it's on the board. I know the place. They make good gear. Yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> God, there's some familiars here. Yeah, Eastman's there again. Yeah, Eggleston, Ferner, Cola. Inspector. Cola, Phillips. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Tim. Oh, thank you, sir. Right, that's you, my boy. Still, they seem to be more of them than they used to be. Yeah, but they're not doing much work by the looks of things. See what you mean. Well, maybe the big boys have turned from jewel thefts to payroll robberies. Or banks. There hasn't been a major jewel theft in weeks, and that one was at Cooper Pedy. Polished opals. Ready for sale? Over $50,000 worth. That's a lot of cufflinks. And it's more money than Hogarth could have raised. The big, expensive car. Could be. But where does Hogarth tie in on this? This isn't his league at all. He was a chemist. And a drug pusher. And he is still playing up? Yeah, only when I laugh. No, it goes away when I do this. You know, I've got a feeling about that car. Somehow it's got the key to the whole deal. Any further word on it? No, but you can't drive a car like that around without somebody noticing. What they see in that game, I'll never know. Won't you be young? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. Three more, please, Harry. Uh, how about you, Roy? No, I'm right. Hey, I said the drinks were on me. But you can't pay for everything. I put it down to expenses. It's a tax dodge. Oh. There's something I'd like to ask you, Roy. Ask away. Why us? How do you mean? Well, if I was marketing boards in the States, I'd want the best surfers available to go overseas. I mean, sure, we can surf, and Nick's going to be one of the best. But we're not champions. Not by a long chalk. That's exactly it. I want to sell these boards to everyone, not just the champions. That's why you're perfect. Nice bunch of ordinary guys who, who just love surfing. Oh, yeah. Here you are. Thanks. You just enjoy yourself, Joey. Leave the worrying to me. Anything you say. Good. By the way, I've got a photograph of you. Me? I think it's you at your car. Where'd you get it? I was taking a photo of Nick and Lumpy. You must have been dumping rubbish or something about a hundred yards away. Where was this? At the beach. Where's the photograph now? Beating us to America. I sent it to Surfing World, you know, the magazine. The negative? Still at the chemist. I've got another set of prints done. I want it. Why? Publicity. You're not to send photographs of yourself overseas or anywhere else. 
Now, that's now my business. You just remember that. OK, OK, calm down. I'm sorry, Roy. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of money tied up in this thing. You just let me have the photograph and the negative, and we'll forget the whole thing. As I said before, anything you say. Here, keep the voice supply from this. If it runs out, let me know when I come in tomorrow. Right. Well, I must be off. I've got things to do. Oh, by the way, I've got one of the boards out in the car. I'll go out and get it. You can pick up the other two from the shop tomorrow. Right out, Mr. Mason. OK, see you. It's you. Well, I've got another shipment ready for you. Well, how's the first lot going? They're all ready for shipping out. Yeah, of course it'll be safe. I'll leave it locked in my office. The staff haven't arrived yet. As soon as they do, I'll be right over. See you. It's two days since we found the body. And we're still no closer to finding out who did it or why he did it. What is it, Sergeant? Miss Bacon to see you, Inspector. A daily visit. All right, send her in. Right, sir. Shall I go? No, 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 for God's sake, stay. This way, Miss Bacon. Good morning, Inspector. I promise I won't faint this time, young man. Please sit down. I don't want you to think of me as a nuisance, Inspector, but I do think I'm on to something. Oh? Oh? There's a hotel about three miles from my house, about the same distance from the property I rented to Mr. Hogarth. Well, last night I went there to get a small bottle of sherry. I run out and I do like a small drop before bed. Well, I just parked my car when I saw this big, expensive car parked at the hotel. Just like the one Mrs. Cummings had described to me on the telephone. Well, I went home immediately and rang Mrs. Cummings and gave her my description detail for detail. And, Inspector, I think it's the same car. What was the number? Hmm? The number? The registration number on the number plate. Oh, no. No, I didn't. Well, there was a man in the car, uh, very well dressed. I didn't want to arouse his suspicion, so I drove off. What was the name of the car? A Mercedes. Oh, I know, because a cousin of mine has one. Oh, of course, a different colour, but very definitely a Mercedes. Oh, and it had one of those surfboard things in the back seat. Surfboard? Yes. Just like the young man ride down at the beach. What was the name of the hotel? The Rye Hotel. Well, thank you, Miss Bacon. Is that helpful, Inspector? Oh, I do so want to help. Everything's helpful in this case, Miss Bacon. But if you see the car again, do try to get the number. The number? Yes, I'll remember. Thank you again, Miss Bacon. We're very grateful for your information. Something she said struck a chord, didn't it? Yeah, the surfboard. What about it? On the list of fences we got from the consorting squad, there was a bloke. Uh... Charlie Hall. 
He was a fence, but he went legitimate and opened a surfboard shop. Yeah. Interesting, but not interesting enough. We can't check every Mercedes there is with or without a surfboard. Well, is it worth following up? Yeah. That's why we're going to the Rye Pub. I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing. The boss only gave me a key to the office in case of emergencies. Mr. Mason will take responsibility. He sent me to pick up the boards this morning. Oh, well, Charlie, the boss is looking after these boards personally. And he raced out just as we came to work. It's all right, I'm telling you. The boards are for us to take to the States. He mentioned that, but didn't say you were coming this morning. Are they here or aren't they? Well, I've already told you, they're not outside in the store anywhere, so I guess they have to be in here. Where are they? That looks like one of them. They must have fallen behind the cupboard. Looks like they're only one ready. All right. I'll take this one and come back for the others later. At least that way I'll get a ride in this morning. OK, but I'm not taking any responsibility. You don't have to. I told you. Yeah, you told me. I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Sure, I know him. Comes in here every day, almost. Splashing his money around. He's a very smart dresser. He's sending a group of surfers overseas in a week or so. They're going to flog surfboards in America or something. Surfboards? Yes, quite a market for them, he says. Hmm, well, who are the boys who are going over? Oh, Nick and Joey and uh, Lumpy, I think they call him. <laughs> I wouldn't know their surnames. <laughs> this bloke Mason, do you know where he lives? I wouldn't have a clue. The boys will know, though. They've been to his place. Where do I find them? Oh, with the waves up on their boards. Where else? Well, thanks. <laughs> oh, the surf beach is about half a mile down the road. Joey, he won't even stop for food. Let him surf the new board, he wants to try it out. That ocean will still be there after we've eaten. He's head. Stay with him, I'll get an ambulance. Oh, my head! You stay where you are. 
Where is clothes? In the dune buggy. I'll get them. Come on, Nick. The board. What happened to my board? You just relax, man. We'll worry about your board later. Still a damn fool thing to do. I employ men to make surfboards, not because they're bloody geniuses. I'll just have to tell him that it isn't balanced right. Will he believe that? Be honest. Tell him the board he's got is a sample board for overseas. It's that simple. Nothing now is simple. Go with him. I'll see you at the hospital. All right. for this to happen. Oh, you're going with him? To the States. Oh, you'll probably still make it. Had a pretty nasty belt in the head, but the ambulance men didn't seem to be too worried about it. Which hospital did he go to? Oh, the local one, the uh, Queen Victoria Wing, I think. Can we go and see him? Well, that's up to the hospital authorities. What about his board? What? His surfboard. Where is it? Oh, on the beach, I expect. Well, let's go and get it. Hey, wait a minute. Can I go with you? Sure. Then this police inspector rushes in and rings for an ambulance. To which hospital? Queen Victoria, he said. Well, how long ago did they leave? Ambulance, I don't know. Cop ten minutes ago. Oh! Jerry told me to tell you when I saw you. He's got some photographs he wanted. What, do you mean he's got them on him? Well, I expect so. He didn't leave them here. Well, what photographs? I don't get it. You don't have to. It's either quiet as a grave, or else it's like Luna Park on a Saturday night. <laughs> No bloody use now. What's wrong? What do you know about these? What are they? Well, unless I miss my guess, they're black opals. Black opals in a surfboard? Well, there's one way of smuggling them overseas. Now, just a minute. We had nothing to do with that. I never said you did. Where's the bloke who's going to give you jobs in America? Well, we can take you to where he lives. Okay. Take me. All right, but I can't drive the buggy on the roads. All right, take me to my car and I'll drive it. Constable Riverton? Constable Riverton? Hmm? What is it? What's the matter? I can't hear you. My ears. I can't hear. Well, Mason's not at home. There's a servant of some kind, a maid, I think. Where to now? We'd like to get to the hospital. So would I. But first, the surf shop. I told you it was too good to be true. I told you he wasn't here. Where is he, then? Well, give me a chance and I'll tell you. Well? Well, once he heard I'd given this guy the wrong board, he got hopping mad. And then he rang this other guy. Mason. Yeah, that's him. Well, he came around here like a bat out of hell. Then they both went flying off to look for this Joey character. Did you get the board back? Well, I guess so, yeah. Well, where to exactly? Well, there's a pub these surfy guys drink at. Well, I don't know the name of it. Look, I wasn't even supposed to be listening. I know the pub. I left there less than an hour ago.
I don't like this at all. What do you think I do? What are you going to do? The only thing I can do, try to get the board back and get rid of Joey. But why? He probably doesn't even know what's in the board. I just suppose he does. Well, how could he? Suppose the board was busted at the same time he got his clonk on the head. I'd have been too stunned to know what was happening. Now, that is what you think. It's a chance I'm not prepared to take. Murder's not my line, Mason. It's your department, and I want out. You're too far in to get out. Oh, don't worry. I'll do the dirty deed. You just leave it to me. I'm looking for Joey Peters. I understand he's had an accident. I'm his brother. Oh, yes, Mr. Peters. He hit his head with a surfboard, I understand. A surfboard? Oh, he was done for a while. But there's no worries now. Well, where is he? I'd like to see him. Oh, he's gone, Mr. Peters. Gone? Gone where? Confidentially. He told me that riding a surfboard's like riding a horse. As soon as you fall off, you have to climb right back on again. You mean the beach? Yes. Somewhere called the Devil's Elbow. Good, thank you, nurse. My God, the cops! That's it, Mason's Mercedes. Whoever it is, I want it. Pretty good. Gotta be in the police force. You gotta be kidding. All right, get up. All right, what's your story? Nothing. I've nothing to do with it. Well, that's your story. Oh, hello. How are the years now? Oh, fine, thanks. Where's Joey? He's gone. Oh, where? Would you believe? Surfing. <laughs> I believe. Has anybody else inquired about him? Um, only his brother. Did you tell him where he'd gone? Yes, to some surfing spot called the Devil's Elbow, to get his confidence back. Would you do me a favor? Of course. Ring Inspector Buchanan. Tell him I've gone to the Devil's Elbow. Yes, but why? Why? Because Joey Peters doesn't have a brother. What he's got is somebody that owns that Mercedes trying to kill him. <laughs> Game Ribbon? I'll give it a try. Uh, Devil's elbow is about a mile through the dunes. Just got bugging, we'll take it. Now listen, he's armed and dangerous. You wait here.
lucky punch. Yeah, pull my punches are lucky. one of the uh, actual dumping of the body. Oh, I must have a blow-up done for the rumpus room. And do you mean to tell me this is once an ordinary white opal? Well, it depends what you mean by ordinary. It's a very expensive white opal. And it's now a ten times more expensive black opal. You must give me the recipe. You couldn't even bake a scone, let alone an opal. That's enough out of you, Kim Riverton. Actually, it was a quite incredible scheme. So is it. You're dying to tell us, so go on with it. Well, thank you. Well, here's how it goes. First of all, buy up stolen white opals from Cooper Petey. And boil them black. Using Hogarth's formula. For which he was murdered. Then you send them overseas. Concealed in surfboards. Look, who's telling this story? My glass is in an empty position. You can see he's recovered, can't you? I'm glad, because it's your shout. What's that? I said it's your shout. I'm sorry, young lady, I can't hear a word you're saying. 